Hey everybody, uh, this is Krista from Colorado Custom Lures. I am doing a Rayburn Red on a um, nude XD8 clear lure. Um, so I got these from Cedar Run Outdoors. Um, they were sent to me to do a Rayburn Red pattern for a customer on. So I thought I'd just do a quick video on um, on these for you tonight. So these run deep, uh, deep diving. Uh, I think they're like around 17 foot um, diving depth roughly give or take a few feet and um, I started out with you know basically just a clear epoxy lure and um, I've kind of figured out that with the Strike King lures they do epoxy the eyes in pretty heftily so if I were going to change the eye color on a Strike, Strike King lure in the future I probably would not change the eyes uh, if I was going to paint a nude Strike King lure in the future, I had to, ended up, I tried to um, wedge these out with an X-Acto knife and it did not work. They're way too stuck in there. So I ended up having to Dremel, grind them out, and it took me about forever to get to lures, um, to get the eyes out so I can change the color of them. So if anybody ever has asked me to do repaints and you wonder why. <laughs> There's, there's an example of why I don't do repaints typically. So I thought I'd give these nude these nude baits a try um, because they were a request. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I have some King's Gold. This is a King's Gold and I did do a Rayburn Red Trap in my recent recent um, live show, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this uh, on a shorter video without uh, comments so that you can kind of breeze through it if you want. So this is a really popular color in the spring, all over. Uh, mimics the craw around that time of year. Um, if I have a lot of paint in my gun, I do usually put a lid on just because I don't, I, I'll be not paying attention, I'll turn it sideways. So I just sprayed on my box just to make sure I get it clear. So this is gonna be a little gold on the bottom and I'm gonna fade this up and I thin this out a good bit. Um, I'm gonna just blend the colors together a little bit. So there's three colors I'm using. This is a King's Gold on the bottom. And then I'll blend it, um, a transparent orange Createx into it. And then I will also um, then blend a red transparent over top of that. A little bit of black on the back and then I'll add the signature gold stencil, which I will show you here shortly. So I'm just gonna go about halfway up the lure with this. And uh, just get a little overspray on it so that I can blend the colors together. And um, this is trying to mimic the Rayburn Red color here. And this gets pretty close. So I'm putting on, want to make sure I get it pretty heavy on the bottom because that's where it's going to kind of stay. Um, and then I have to do my second one because I am doing two of these for... You gotta have two, right? Just in case you break one off. <laughs> Especially if you're competing. So sometimes you need five. It depends on the person <laughs> and how much, how many lures you break off in a tournament, I guess. So um, again, these are available at Cedar Run Outdoors when they're uh, when they're in stock. Um, if you do want to paint an original Strike King and start with a clear, at least start with a clear. Um, a clear slate as far as everything but the eyes go. Um, if you you can Dremel the eyes out, it's just not the easiest or cleanest thing to do. You gotta be really careful that you don't damage the uh, rest of the bait in the process. And so it's kind of a delicate process. Um, I was hoping that they were gonna be one of the ones that was easy to pop out, but they're not. So. Um, if anybody has, if anybody's on uh, watching that's a, a lure painter themselves that has any advice for me, I will not be offended if you want to share that with me. You can always shoot me a PM and tell me if you have an easier way, but I can't think of uh, any easier way, honestly. So, epoxy's pretty tough, we all know that. I'm cleaning my brush out now. I have a sink here right now. Um, I'm not in my, my normal setting. I won't usually have a sink. So I'll just use a dump cup and a spray bottle. Okay, so um, 
with the transparents actually, I don't need to dilute, so I switch just a habit to grab the bottle of water or reducer. I have both over there. It just depends on what I'm using, whether I use reducer or water. So I'm just, I'm not gonna put a ton in here because I don't wanna waste it, so I can always add to it. Um, and then again, it, whether you use a cap or not is your personal preference. If I have a thinner paint and I'm putting a decent amount in there, I like to use a cap. Um, and I just sprayed the extra, made sure I got all the water out of my gun before I started spraying this. So I didn't get a big spray of water on my bait. So I'm just fading this down right across the middle. And then I'm fading it down onto the belly, getting it pretty heavy in the middle. Um, and then just kind of letting it fade into the yellow a little bit. So really light at the bottom and then uh, heavier in the middle. Just kind of holding it at an angle. I have my PSI set at about 18-ish here. Seems to be a good, seems to be working good for me for now. So you see just the very bottom stays yellow and uh, the orange kind of just fades You'll see it kind of fades into the yellow, and I don't have the best lighting in here, you guys. I'm gonna have much better lighting when I get to my new studio uh, in the next week or two. Um, and I'll be able to give you guys better quality videos. Okay, so on to the next lure, and I'm, I'm just doing these two at a time because I need two of them. So um, I would prefer to just do one so I could show you guys a shorter video, but this gives you a few different chances to see how I'm doing this and if you guys have questions please don't hesitate to PM me. Um, I'm happy to help out other painters if you need any if you have uh, any questions for me. We were all new once. Or if you're a, you know an experienced lure painter then you have advice for me too. I I am not offended either by help. It's always nice when somebody wants to help you make your day and your job a little easier, so. I've gotten some great tips from people who watch my live feeds um, just in the processes and how I do things. So I'm gonna rinse this out again now. That was transparent orange, just plain transparent orange pre So I'm just gonna rinse this out. I don't have to be really super, I don't have to do a really super great job because I'm going to red. And uh, red's darker, so you're not gonna see. Make sure you shake them, just to make sure you get any of the set of, anything that might have sold at the bottom in there. So this is a really bold red, and this will go over the whole top, and then uh, it'll fade into the orange at the bottom. So again, my cap because I spill. The worst is when you spill black when you're putting a stencil on. Absolute nightmare. Okay. And then I'll grab this. And if you guys have any question about where questions about where I got, I get a lot of questions about where I got this. This is a Helping Hands, this little stand here. These are on Amazon. Just type in Helping Hands on Amazon and you'll find it really easy. So this is just a regular transparent red create text. And I'm gonna stick mostly to the top and just kind of let it fade to the orange. You can kind of see the fade there. So I'm not gonna go too much more down with the fade. I will probably come back and hit the top again um, to make sure that it's nice and red. And then, uh, and then I'll heat set this before I do my stencil. I don't want to, I'm not heat setting it right now because I'm blending, um, but I will heat set it before I do my stencil. And see, I just bumped it. Okay, I bumped it in the middle, so no biggie. I'll just go back over it because the nice thing about not being done and bumping it is that you can just fix it. When you screw up in the, t in the stenciling phase, it's worse because you have to change colors and go back and fix it. And then you have to re-stencil. So again, there's your fade. Red to orange, you can see. Sometimes I'll pull it back in the light so you can kind of see a little better the fade. It's tough to see. I know this light is terrible. Sorry guys. But you get the idea. So you see how I'm holding it when I do that? I'm just kind of holding it at an angle to my brush so it kind of just... So 
So make sure you get the side nice and red. You don't want to get it too, 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 too heavy because you don't want the paint to run. So I'm going to make sure that I get the top. I'm going to heat set this just real quick. Make sure that it's cut the coverage is good. Um, so my live shows are usually two hours, so you'll get to see. I design on two lures here, probably in like, hopefully 20 minutes. A little shorter. So I'm gonna just, I don't wanna blow all my stuff away, all my paper towels and stuff, so I'm just setting this real quick over here and off the side. So where I bumped it a little bit, I have just a little bit of, a little better coverage right there, so I'm just hitting that spot again. And a little bit over here too. So, just want to make sure that it's even on both sides and that your coverage is good. It's really pretty, really pretty bold red. Nice looking spring craw. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hang that one up and I'm going to move on to the next one. And we're going to repeat that and then we'll switch to black. And I use a Wicked Black. Uh, when I'm doing detail work, I use the, just a regular Wicked Black. And I reduced it with 2012 Createx Reducer. Um, I don't always use Reducer. I should, but I don't. Um, I don't know why. I just, I just don't. I don't know. Force a habit, I guess. But when I'm doing detail work, um, I do always use Reducer because it helps not to clog your brush so bad when you're stopping and starting. Because sometimes when you're stenciling, I mean, you're as fast as you can, but you also want to be accurate. So. Um, you have to start and stop to some degree, especially if you're switching stencils or if you're moving the stencil around and you have to replate, re, um, rearrange it to make sure you have the right spot before you spray your stencil. Um, sometimes you have to let your brush sit for just a, just a second or a minute. Um, and black does have a tendency to cake around the needle. Um, I mean, it can you can get you'll get tip dry bad, which means just means the the very tip of the needle uh, where you retract it to let the paint out get caked with paint. Um, but I also I find that even worse of a problem is uh, when it dries around the needle on the inside of your brush um, because you can't wipe that off. You have to take your brush apart and you have to clean your needle. And sometimes you just have to clean the whole brush, um, depending on how bad it is. Usually you end up, you'll end up by the end of the night, you'll have to clean your whole brush. You might get through the rest of the night if you're not doing a ton um, by just cleaning the needle, but that might be a stretch. And it also depends what kind of airbrush you have, because the Awada that I use is much better than some of the cheaper brushes I have that I don't really use anymore. Um, I started out using I started out using master airbrushes and they were um, you know an e economical choice when I was starting out but I found quickly that uh, once I got an Awada HPCS that the clogging is so, so much less of a problem and I had terrible problems with pearls then as well and I don't have as many problems now with this brush so it's just a better quality brush so my advice if you can afford it is to start with a good brush it from the get-go and avoid yourself the headache of struggling with a cheap brush but everybody will tell you that but your budget is your budget so you do what you can if you have to go with a cheaper brush when you're starting out I would say just make sure that you clean it a lot and clean it well and when you think you have it clean you probably still need to clean it more use an old needle that's bent because eventually you'll drop one and you'll bend your needle um, and scrape out the Inside of the barrel, make sure you scrape out the um, inside of the nozzle tip because um, that can get caked with stuff and you don't even realize it's in there. It's so tiny. Uh, so the end of a, of a bent needle works really good for that. Um, and everybody has their own ways of doing it. That's just my advice. So, Okay, now I've switched colors and I'm going to move on to, I got a little bit of water on this. I'm going to put black over it so it's okay, but I'll just dry it real quick a little bit. 
get these nice and dry. They look really, really pretty. Um, these want to slide around in the helping hands because they're really heavy and long. These are deep, deep divers, so not the deepest, but they're pretty deep. So I'm just going to spray a little on my towel here. You can turn your um, pressure down when you're doing black, but um, I'm just doing the backs of these in black, so I'm not doing any crazy detail work. So I'm just going to leave my pressure alone, and I'm just going to use trigger control. And when somebody says trigger control, all they mean is just not to pull back very far on the trigger. Just kind of barely pull back on it until you get just a tiny mist. And then you can control where your paint's laying down and just go over it with really thin layers. The 2012 reducer also helps the paint dry a little faster on the bait. I'm just getting the, the nose here so that the stripe goes all the way down because on this bait uh, it's a little different than the trap because you don't have that chin on it really. It's all just the belly. I don't want it to just stop right there so I'll just add that. So I just want to make sure that these are nice and solid on the top. With my um, Midnight Fair Craw, I don't completely fill it in. It's more of a shadow so that you can still see the craw pattern through it. But since this one just has a side stencil, I'll just make it solid. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush and I have to switch to gold for our stencil. So really quick, I need to go ahead and rinse this out. You don't ever want to leave black. You don't want to leave black paint in your brush uh, for any amount of time if you can. If you're working on something, then get, you know, don't wait. Just do it right now. Um, just even just a few minutes of it sitting with black and it will, it'll clog. Okay, so you want a nice clean paper towel for this part because I'm going to lay it down to you my stencil. To get a really accurate stencil, I like to lay them down. So I'll just take a a clean paper towel and um, I'll try and move this over so you guys can see a little better. I got it a little wet so I'm going to avoid that spot but um, you just I'll take my bait. This is pretty dry. I'll lay it down on here and then um, I have a stencil that was created by a friend of mine. Um, if you are interested in having custom stencils created, not just pre-made ones but like actual designs that you want made um, specific for you um, I do know somebody who does a great job. Uh, she does not have a web page or a Facebook page, so if you want her information, go ahead and just shoot me a PM. Um, or you can email me at coloradolures at gmail.com, um, and I can give you her contact information. So she um, used, used to work in um, design and uh, now just does it a little bit part-time, but... Um, she does a really good job. This is an excellent, excellent version of the stencil, the original stencil. So, and I just covered up on the bottom there. I just covered up the little hash marks on the bottom because when you do a trap, they have those little hash marks on the bottom. If you saw my video, um, my live video, you'll see that I did not cover those on that. But on these uh, XDs, they um, do not have those hash marks on the bottom. So, and it would, be, it would be pretty tough to get them on there accurately, actually, because the curve of the bait makes it just a little bit more difficult. So, all right, stencil placement. So this is gonna go a little over 20 minutes, but, and I'll probably just let you see this one bait so that I don't keep you here forever, but this is gonna go all the way up to the black. So you just wanna look at the end of this See where your placement is. Make sure you're not hitting the eyes with this. And then hold it as tight as you can without, without uh, scratching it. You don't want to scratch the paint underneath. It happens, guys. Scratching the paint underneath when you're stenciling happens. This is cardstock. Um, I've cut mylar as well. It's really tough to cut thick mylar with a 
with a vinyl cutting machine. I have a vinyl cutting machine, and then um, Allie, uh, she can cut, she can cut them for you, or she can make you the design to cut yourself. Um, she'll do either one. She just makes me the design to cut myself because I have my own machine, so then I can just take the image and manipulate it to the size I want. So I can make you know any kind of blank in the same stencil. Um, that's one nice thing about having a vinyl cutter. I didn't always have a vinyl cutter. And now that I have one, I don't know what I do without it. So, um, it's an investment. But uh, it was my Christmas present from my wonderful husband, Chris. If you watch my videos, you know him. Um, my live videos. And I am live every Friday, um, for the most part. So, if you ever want to just chat. With us while we paint bait, while I paint bait, check out my live feed on Friday night. And my live feed is at um, Colorado Custom Lures on Facebook, and I go live every Friday night at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. And I do a different set of designs, two two designs every Friday night. You're welcome to ask questions, and uh, we appreciate shares. Any, uh, anybody who's willing to share our live feed, greatly appreciated too. So, the more the merrier. Word of mouth is pretty much where I get all of my business. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna just clean this up because I have a little bit of, um, so what you'll end up seeing sometimes on these is if you're not careful and you spray too heavy, without drying in between is that you'll get a little seepage underneath your your stencil. If you catch it quickly enough, you can usually clean it up. And you wanna, you know, make sure that the paint underneath is dry before you put your stencil on. Otherwise, you can pretty much say goodbye to your design. So, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry this up. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to um, I'm gonna hit it with another coat because it's not quite where I want it yet. So I'm just going to get this really dry. Okay. I'm going to get that really dry and then I'm going to go over it again because it's not quite as... Uh, defined as I want it to be. So just make sure you place it correctly again. You want the lines to be exact. Ideally, you don't want to have to redo this. Um, you want to leave it on there, dry, dry it, and not take it off. But um, in this particular case, I didn't get it where I wanted it the first try, so. Um, and always remember guys, you know, if this is your first shot at doing something, you can always take the paint off and start over. As long as you haven't put an epoxy coat on it, all you need is a little acetone and a piece and a, a rag or whatever, and you can um, take the paint off and start over. I like my stuff to look right, really right. So, uh, you know, if there's a mistake that's at all noticeable, then um, I'll start over, or you know, if I can't fix it. Sometimes you can just fix it with a little um, touching up. It just depends what the mistake is, what color it is, and um, where the where the mistake is exactly on the bait. So. So I'm just going to make sure this is t as tight as I can. Okay, and then lift it. So this looks pretty good. I have one spot where the red um, chipped off a bit, so I'll just touch that up. Um, I'll just touch that spot up. It should be no problem. Um, you can barely even see it anyways, but here is what the stencil looks like all done. So there's your Strike, Strike King 8XD Rayburn Red. 
All right, guys. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful night, and thank you for watching. Again, um, ColoradoCustomLures.com is the website. And check us out on Facebook if you're not already watching this on Facebook. Um, or on YouTube at Colorado Custom Lures. So have a great night, and thanks for watching.